That is correct. You guys did not skip a video. We finally have some plates for the RX-7. What's up guys? I hope you're all having an amazing day. Welcome back to the videos. Today we have a whole big bunch of stuff on that bench over there. But I can't wait to show you guys what's going on the cars. But first of all, we have a very, very, very special thing for the RX-7 and something I've been holding off to put on the car sort of since the whole thing has been finished and yellow and has the TEs and everything else as well. And that was finally putting a set of plates on it. And I was so undecided on a set of plates for this thing. But then a very, very, very special subscriber actually sent me a message and said, I hate seeing your car with those horrible plates on it. So he decided to change it. And sure enough, Baldy, the combination that I honestly never have even thought of was available in the Japanese style plate. And so the RX-7 finally has a set of Queensland Jap spec plates, which is so cool. Sorry, on camera they kind of look like white and black, but I assure you, they are actually like this really nice sort of dark green color. They look sick. And so finally, the RX-7 has a set of plates that fit. And so does the 33, which I am so happy about. We've always had plates for the 33. The Zarafa's Brecky roll. <laughs> and now we have Beatty. How good. <laughs> no, but in all fairness, massive, massive, massive thank you to the guy that got me the plates. I can't say his actual name, but he's helped me out more than I could ever imagine uh, with this whole YouTube whole thing that we've got going on. So I want to give a massive shout out to him. Thank you so much. And uh, let's get into some of the other parts that today for the 33, is probably the title of this video. We are putting a new exhaust on the 33. But let me show you, before we get to the exhaust, let me show you some new parts. So the new exhaust is sitting down on the ground right there. You guys can kind of see a few little mufflers and stuff we got down there. It's definitely probably three more than this car has ever had. Um, but there was a guy that was wrecking a R33 here in Brisbane. Now there's a bit of a backstory behind this car that he had. Um, I'll put some pictures up of the car right now. But uh, unfortunately the whole car was uh, crashed apparently on Nebo. Um, into a tree or a pole or something along those lines while he was trying to do some sick toge. But anyway, apparently the guy, yeah, was driving an automatic R33 Skyline. It was actually a really, really nice car. It only had 100,000 caves on it. Um, and the whole car that all these parts came off was actually like super, super nice. It was so clean. But yeah, apparently he was um, suspended or unlicensed or something along those lines, um, crashed the car on Nebo. Uh, big issue with the police, the insurance didn't cover it. Apparently this guy just had a few dramas <laughs> with this crash that he had. Um, but that's okay because out of it, we got a fresh set of R33 taillights. Now, originally I wasn't actually gonna get a set of taillights, but they just happened to be on the car and they were too cheap to pass up. And uh, if you guys remember in my car especially, um, because this hasn't sealed properly, um, I'll quickly show you what's happened. So this side over here would have looked great until the other day I was trying to pull them off and I put that massive big crack through the back of them. Um, so they were actually the nicest set of taillights that I've had. And then they've also had these like little splinter cracks or spider cracks through the actual lens itself. So they weren't in the greatest condition. And then this one here, I don't know if you can see, but they've started to yellow up like crazy. Um, I don't know if you can really see it that well. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. Um, so there's actually rust. Because this towel light hadn't been sealed properly, the rust had sort of gone all the way through the actual inside housing of the towel light. Now you can clean it up, but there's no reflectors there for the indicators or anything along those lines. So we're just gonna change out the entire set of towel lights. So that is correct. We have a fresh set of R33 towel lights here. Both of them were in mint condition. The only issue that I have with one of them was the fact that the corner had been chipped off this one here. Um, and unfortunately, it's the one that was all rusted out. I didn't realize until I got home, but that's completely fine. We'll be able to put this one up on the car. It's not rusted and it looks pristine. Same as this one right here. They look amazing. So yeah. And then not only that, but he also had a driver's door handle surround. Now I didn't look at it when I was there and try and fit it. I got the wrong side. So <laughs> um, I'm probably going to have to cut out this little section in this other side here. That should be completely fine with the Dremel and then it'll still sit in there nice and fine. So that's no worries whatsoever. And then he also had a fuse box cover. Um, looks a lot nicer than mine. Mine's all faded and disgusting. So I quickly grabbed that as well. Now this one here is probably the biggest part of the R33 that I wanted to do for such a long time, which I could imagine is probably gonna happen this weekend. I just wanna make sure I have enough time to sort out all the settings on link and everything else as well. But if you guys remember the guys that built the engine and basically fixed up the entire R33, Max from Boost 
goosegums or on song performance. They're currently doing an R33 for a customer and they needed a cheap exhaust. So I had a cheap straight through exhaust that originally came on this car and he had a NZ wiring trigger kit, which I have been wanting to do on this car for so long now. Originally I was gonna go with Ross um, or PRP or something along those lines, but they are very expensive. And for the STD33, it just didn't deserve it. But NZ Wiring make this amazing kit that Sam's put on his R33.4 in Japan, and this kit has proven itself to be an, a brilliant kit. So we have an NZ Wiring trigger kit to hopefully sort out every single last one of the issues that this R33 has. We've been struggling with VCAM, we have been struggling with cold start, we have been struggling with just a lot of things on this car to try and get it up to par and just help it sort of run smoothly. And Sam said that this thing has basically fixed every single issue that his car had with revving. My car's been struggling with issues with revving for a while and I just can't pinpoint exactly what it is. I wish I could have been able to test out another uh, Series 1.5 cam. However, um, I don't have one available uh, anywhere at the moment and I was just gonna buy a new one. But a new CAS is basically the exact same price as an NZ trigger kit and it is gonna be so much better to tune with. It is so much more accurate and so much faster. So we're gonna put that on the car this weekend um, and I am super, super excited for that. If you guys do want to grab a NZ wiring trigger kit here in Australia, definitely go down and check out the link for On Song Performance. Go grab one of the kits from there. Um, it's pretty cool they're now a distributor for these types of kits and parts and everything else as well. I think it's absolutely amazing what these guys are doing and uh, I'm keen to work with them more in the future. Now, another really cool thing, um, Max Peating Rods actually reached out to me a couple of months back and they asked me, hey, how's everything going with your turbo and everything? And I will admit, I answered them very truthfully. I said, I have had one and it blew up after six months. I've had the second one and it's already pushing oil out. And they said, don't stress, we'll send you out another one. So here we have a brand new Max Speeding Rods RB25 Turbo. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're probably gonna be not using the rear housing, but we're basically taking off the rear housing and using our ported one that we used. Um, so yeah, everything's on here, the actuator, everything. It is the exact same turbo as the one that we have had in the R33 for probably about a year or so now, making just under 300 horsepower. So so massive thank you to Max Peating Rods. If you guys do want anything at Max Peating Rods, definitely go out and check out the link in the description. And there's also a discount code down there as well if you guys want to go get anything from Max Peating Rods. So go check them out. Pretty cool company. They've definitely helped me out a fair bit with the R33. And I do think I will be going to a different turbo setup and everything else soon. Um, so yeah, I've got a few turbos here. I've got the one on the car, plus I have a few extra parts down there as well. So they always keep me stocked up with these turbos. So thank you very much, Max Peating Rods. Now let's get finally to the exhaust. So as I said, this car that this bloke crashed was actually pretty clean. It was actually, to be honest, looking at the car, it was probably cleaner than mine. <laughs> um, but anyway, right here we have a mild steel X-Force exhaust system for an R33 GTST. And not only that, we have an actual cat. <laughs> and no, this thing has not been bashed out. We have an actual working cat, which is absolutely amazing. This car as a daily driver has definitely been driving me a little bit insane with all the fumes and everything it puts out in the morning. I watch people behind me put their windows up and it's just, it's horrifying to see. I just feel, very, I feel really bad for anyone behind this car. So putting a cat in this car was certainly a must. Plus it is a bit loud and I would hate to get defected for the, uh, the, the cat that we have in this car right now. So not only that, but we have the rest of a three inch exhaust system, which is about the same size as what we have in the car at the moment. But the biggest difference is we have not one, but two mufflers in this system. So this is really gonna quiet the car down, which I'm super, super excited about. The car's certainly really droney, and to be honest, for a car that's not exactly as fast as I would hope it would be, it definitely sounds a lot faster than it is. So we're gonna be changing that out today and putting a nice sounding exhaust on it. I've actually never heard this system uh, on a car before. All I know is it has one more muffler and one more cat than we've ever had on this car before, and um, it should be, should be pretty nice. Now, not only that, the biggest reason as to why we are putting this exhaust on is the fact that when I actually start properly tracking this car, especially at Lakeside, they have a massive big noise restriction there. So it's 95 decibels 
Ohan car. And mine read last time at 96 and almost got me kicked off the track if it wasn't like a prototype test day. So I definitely want to be well under that limit just in case one day I go out there and my car tests like 98, 99, 100. Um, I definitely don't want to be kicked off track. If I basically spend whatever I have left for the week on a track day, I don't want to get kicked out for it. So that is pretty much the main reason why we're putting this new exhaust on today. It's going to make the car sound a whole lot nicer. Plus, we also are going to be putting a screamer on this car, hopefully very soon with the new turbo setup and everything. So having a nice quiet exhaust to cruise around with and then being able to have that loud gate is certainly going to make it a lot more enjoyable to drive instead of just being loud all the time. So yes. Anyway, let's quickly bring the R33 in. So here's to hoping the fourth exhaust system that we are trying on this car is actually going to work. We've had a straight butt. I've, we've had a JJR exhaust system, which was super quiet. And then we went to this one here, which was just a cheapo that Dan had lying around at Italy Exhaust and Fabrication. And now we have an X-Force, which X-Force is a big brand. They had some decent exhaust systems on the XR6 Turbo and the XR6, and I've always sort of liked the sound of them. So today we're gonna to be putting one on the 33 and fingers crossed the milestone is gonna take out some of the raspiness and the extra muffler and the extra cat is certainly gonna help out with some of that sound. So let's quickly bring it in. This is gonna be the last time you guys hear this car um, with the noise it makes. So it's kind of a little bit sad. I've liked how this car sounded, but yeah, time for a new era. One thing I will quickly check before we, uh... yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, what about this one here? Oh, I think they're the same size. Both festival, so uh, yeah, both can go on the STD. Let's do it. Silly me bought uh, three bolt gaskets, and these are all two bolt. Silly, silly, silly me. Oh well, we'll just hope that the caskets that are on there will uh, withstand everything, so. All right, so the exhaust is already unbolted at the cap. So I don't know if you guys can see that all the way down there. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's already unbolted down there. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I should just be able to get rid of all of these um, uh, flanges right here. I think I have some, pretty sure I have some. There we go, let's start right here. Beautiful. Some silicon spray. And just be able to spray this on some of the uh, spray this on some of the hangers, and then fingers crossed, we should be uh, all good to get those hangers off real quick. Right, out, guys. So this is the exhaust that we had on the car, and um, it was pretty cool. As I will say, it actually looks like it steps up to a weird like four-inch flange there, oh, weird four-inch pipe there. I don't know, but um. Yeah, so this one's now at the car. Time to put the new one in. Oh, Sarah, you're just in time. I need you to check something. Uh, I'm just going to quickly start the car. I just need you to check something real quick, if that's okay. Douglas! Oh, you messed up. Oh, look at you. Can you hold the camera real quick? Oh my god, so many things happening. Come Sorry. Oh, you want me to check? Yeah, um, just hold it there real quick. Yep. Remember how the car used to sound? Yep. Alright. <laughs> It's gonna double check something real quick. Is it gonna be really loud? No. There's no exhaust, of course it's gonna be loud. <laughs> wow, you figured that out real quick. Well, your car has no exhaust, you kinda of just gotta do it. That is hideous. Do you think my neighbors would like that if I just had that bit? Go fix it, please. <laughs> Imagine if we did that to the FD. That's horrible. Oh, the FD, don't even. <laughs> it would be so interesting. Don't even. Oh, that's, oh, that stinks. All right, okay, goodbye. Okay, love you. <laughs> All right, love you too. Excuse me, defect lady. Um, no, I was not scraping the ground in four centimeters off the ground. I don't know what you're talking about. Silly Billy. One cool thing I think is really going to help with this system is especially the fact that uh, all the hangers are, are rolling like these um, big clamps. So I guess I can just undo that and this whole thing can spin and that can all spin to make sure I'm not hitting the bumper and burning it like I was with the old system. Um, so I think it's going to be definitely a little bit nicer to fit up. 
Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna loosely fit everything, put the cat in place, do the midsection, and then I'll do this one here, work out exactly where I want all that, and then uh, do that flange up. And I think it's just gonna make this whole system come together really nicely. So uh, yeah, I guess just let's get into it and um, learn as we go. And also massive thank you to the old owner, um, or the guy that actually had this car, who put the bolts back in, because um, it's gonna make it so much easier to realize that that bolts up to the front, this part here bolts up to this, and then that part there bolts up to there. Even though it would have been pretty easy to work around, but um, yeah, anyway. Let's go install our cat. It actually is a cat. Insane. Okay, so the tip's in, not finalized, but I'm pretty sure this exhaust also had the, the angle tip as well, so I'm gonna try and make sure it's centered within that hole there. Definitely looks a lot nicer than that blue tip that we have there though. Um, it was almost gonna have to rotate it, because I was gonna say, I don't think that X-Force purposely put their logo upside down. I'm pretty sure that's at the direct bottom. <laughs> so uh, this exhaust I could imagine wasn't probably fitted up properly on the last system. Uh, on the last car so we're going to make sure that that's 100 percent good on this car so we're going to rotate the exhaust within those little clamps there make everything work um, but before we do that i'm going to put the center muffler section in and just make sure that all lines up perfectly Alrighty, guys so we ran into a little bit of an issue as you do with all exhaust systems whatsoever luckily this one was easily able to be fixed so if you guys remember i bought the cat as well as the whole exhaust system and i thought the cat was originally just the same cat that came in the car um, as it turns out, it probably was an X-Force cat. Um, so having a look just underneath the car, um, I ended up putting the test pipe back in. So the test pipe is actually, in comparison to the cat that's sitting on the ground there, 10 centimeters shorter than the cat itself. Um, which means that most likely the exhaust system that we use or are using here was actually a full system dump back which they do sell. So I messaged the bloke that has the exhaust and he still has the dump, which is awesome. So that means um, that hopefully I can go around and pick that thing up and we should have a full exhaust with a cat, dump and everything else as well. But for now, to get me to and from work, this is definitely gonna help a whole lot. And then fingers crossed, I know the X-Force dump actually comes with like a bell mouth. So fingers crossed, we might actually have a full exhaust system soon, which would be pretty cool. So yeah, now all I gotta do is I just have to sort out exactly how low this thing is sitting. Obviously we can't have it sitting that low because it'll just scrape on the ground. Um, and the muffler is all out of whack. So I'm going to bolt everything up, uh, make sure everything's sitting all nice and flat. Um, and yeah, should look really cool. Hell yeah. Okay guys, so that was a little bit more involved than just chucking on a brand new exhaust. There was a few little things I had to overcome um, with a typical X-Force exhaust system that I've heard. Um, so anyway, first of all, let's quickly bring that exhaust down right there. Very cool. So, oop, my bad. <laughs> so the exhaust actually went on relatively smoothly. It probably would have been easier if I just chucked the whole thing on, like bolted it all up and then put it all up myself, but obviously I am nowhere near strong enough to do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, a few things that I did uh, just to try and uh, get this into the correct position. As you can see, it's like, it's not as far up as my last exhaust system, but it definitely sits a lot nicer inside there. Um, I moved these big um, clamps and as you can see, that one there is dramatically changed. So that way I could try and raise up that section of the exhaust. And I still have a bit of room to do that. However, that muffler there, I'll quickly show you guys um, while I have the car jacked up. Typical X-Force exhaust system. Um, that muffler there is actually touching right here. And obviously that is not something I want to do because that right there is the fuel tank. So um, if that muffler there is touching all the way up, then yeah, it's obviously not something I want to want to have on the car. So. There's like a balancing act of how low this can go and then how high that can go and yeah, I don't know, it's it's all gonna work out. But yeah, this muffler definitely drops down the lowest point of the car to more of the center of the car, so I don't know, it'd be interesting to see how it all works out. 
and then when I get the new dump pipe and everything else sorted, I should have more room to sort of uh, move this around and tuck it all up out the way and do that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's all good. Easy done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start her up and see what she sounds like. <laughs> Rightio, so it's not as tucked up as I'd hoped. This is as tucked up as I can get, whilst the um, muffler down there can still clear uh, by a couple of, by about a centimetre or so of the fuel tank uh, cover. So that's pretty good for me. I'm pretty stoked with that. And then when I finally get the uh, dump pipe and everything else as well, I should be able to rotate the exhaust a fair bit because of that um, cat down there. Um, and that will sort of tuck up all this section here, but it's definitely going to be a lot taller than my original section, uh, than my original uh, stuff. So uh, let's quickly lower it down and see what she sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so already I'm pretty happy with the tip placement. It looks pretty cool under there. Uh, and not only that, it sticks out probably a lot further from the other exhaust tip that I had. Um, so hopefully we shouldn't get any black crap around the outside of it. Um, yeah, I guess the only thing left to do is to start it and see how it sounds. Fingers crossed this should be nice and quiet and dailyable. Alrighty guys, here we go. Fingers crossed. you guys can hear this but this car is immediately a million percent quieter it is so nice there is no drone and immediately I can hear rattles and everything else that I couldn't hear before um, that I'm kind of annoyed about <laughs> no in all fairness this car feels buttery smooth on power now it is like it's so much nicer just to drive around now. It's so much nicer just to sit in this seat because there's no like horrible drone or rattles or anything. And you know, you don't sort of, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a rough P plate a car anymore. You know, when you just jump in those cars and they just feel rough, this isn't one of those cars anymore. It is like a beautiful, buttery, smooth R33. Oh, I can't wait to get onto like an actual road that feels good because <laughs> this thing is gonna be like, it's gonna it's gonna completely change oh man this is even just waiting at lights oh it is so good you guys hear that taking off you can hear the turbo a lot more now it's still got some cool little pops and crackles on diesel, which is kind of cool. Oh man. And then chuck her into fifth. You don't hear a thing. This is amazing. This is one of the best things I've ever done to this car. Oh my God. And like, I, I, I know I do make like fun of the fact that there is a lot more crackles and I know I do make fun of the fact that there is a lot more like, I don't know, a lot more rattles and stuff in the car, but honestly, it's not too bad with like, your typical rattles and stuff like that on a road that would be normally bad. Um, yeah, no, this is like, this is like a million times better. Can hear the turbo spool up now. Can hear those journal bearings wearing away. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, we still have no speedo. <laughs> we'll get there. This is infinitely better. Let's find the windows down and see what it sounds like. That's one of the biggest things I think is because we have that center muffler now, we don't have that horrible drone inside the cabin. We don't just have a like a muffler at the very back where we can still hear everything that's going on beneath us. Oh my god. This is infinitely better. It's so weird not to be like 
<laughs> I don't know. It just feels so weird not to be disturbing everyone. Not to be disturbing myself. Now I finally have a car that like annoys the crap out of everyone, which is the RX-7. And this car, which I can just be nice and I can daily it and it can be nice and... Oh, ha <laughs> ha. And it's not raspy as well. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice when I get, I think it's gonna be nice when I get a screamer um, because then it's gonna be like best of both worlds where it's nice and quiet to drive around town and just, oh dude. And it's still got the little pops and crackles. Can definitely hear the, um, can definitely hear the trans a bit now. Um, I knew the trans was a little bit, how are you going? Might have to give it a service again. I think it might be the throw up bearing though. Um, Cause I'm, it goes away with the clutch. So I'm pretty sure it should just be that, but. Man, this is such a nice car. Such a nice car to drive now. Infinitely better. There's a big fire over there. Hope everyone's okay. I know this sounds stupid, but it sounds like it's fixed up all of my like, I don't know, my weird like D-cell issues. Like it actually feels like it's running nice and smooth now, but I know it's just the exhaust, so I don't want to give into it. But I feel as though the trigger kit's still going to help immensely. better in every way. We've done it boys. We have done it. This car is amazing. All right here, let's head back home now. We'll wrap up this video. Oh God, truck, please don't hit me. Thank you. Well guys, that is immensely different. Everything about this car is so much more enjoyable now. You can hear the turbo more. You can sort of, you can cruise now with the, with the windows up and the air con on and play music. But then if you want to have that nice quiet, nice loud experience, you open the windows and you just enjoy it. Um, I'm just, I'm blown away just by how much of a difference that has made. Even just adding that one little extra muffler definitely helps. And we'll do a bit of a hot start for you guys so you can kind of understand how quiet it is now. Loudest thing now is just those gauges. So yeah, that is now a hot start. And once it gets down to its 900 or so RPM, that is just so much better in every way, shape and form. I won't feel bad about starting this thing up early in the morning. I won't feel bad about anything about this car now. Um, so yeah, just gonna do those two tail lights, which I'll probably do in the next video. Um, I'm also gonna see if I can tuck up that exhaust a little bit more and I might give it to Dan at uh, Elite Exhaust and just see if you can have a bit of a play around with the system, make it all feel a little bit nicer. But um, I've sort of done the best that I can. Very, very happy with the results though. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please smash like, subscribe, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the content with this car. But we'll definitely have to go around and do a little, we'll definitely go around and do a, like a POV drive video soon. So uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I know guys, thank you so much for watching. Smash like, enjoy.